Merry Christmas! It's December now, I have the right to do this. What is up guys, Christmas Sharp here, and some of you might complain that the next voted tutorial was supposed to be a face rig tutorial. However, Animated Textures is catching up really fast, so I decided to do a follow-up video on the Reflections tutorial, and I'll come back to the voting poll once the voting stops. So if you haven't already, I suggest you watch the previous part of this tutorial, and only then come after that, because I'm gonna use knowledge from the previous tutorial in this one. So before we start, I want to ask you to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified of my tutorials as they come out. Also, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed, and uh, let's get on the tutorial here. We're currently located in a very laggy project. Now, as soon as I hit the render button, you're gonna see what's going on, but we've made this. So as you see, it's pretty laggy, but this is our reflections thing, which I taught you how to do last time. I want to tweak the brightness a bit. Alright, so if I animate this block, you will see I kind of forgot to invert the this thing so yeah now it should be done so if we take a look at this yeah this this kind of functions as a blocks reflection now see the edges here aren't completely aligned but that really doesn't matter because each face is facing a different side so they each have their own reflections I kind of mentioned the last time they'd have to align but that's not true so I want to give you an upgrade on this technique and also teach you how to do textures on imperfect shapes which is the front side I kind of want to see oh th this one uh, let's go with Back, right, left, top, top. Let's go with the top one because we, we can see it. I want you to select the top camera. And as of my animator 1.2.0, we have some new features for the camera, which I haven't even touched yet. And I obviously should because this is a huge advantage. In here we have the field of view, which by the way I set to 90 degrees so all cameras align. That was a suggestion from someone on a Discord server, so credits to them. I should have thought of that. Thank you, by the way. But in here we have five different options. Rotate around a point, depth of field, bloom, color correction, and vignette. Vignette. V vignette. V that. Oh yeah, those, those things only apply once you render, so we're gonna have to do... We're gonna have to do it like this now. I'm very laggy, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to delete the rest of the faces, because even my computer has some limits. I agree, it's a real beast, aren't you, Betty? You're a real beast. But yeah, six camera textures is a lot to handle. The net effect can make the texture look dirty and old. Like, this is the new polished one, this is a bit old and rusty, so if you apply this to all of your edges, it's gonna look like the block is kind of old-ish. So that's one thing you can do. Then you have color correction. You can increase the contrast to make the reflections more chiseled and more clean. Look at this. Also brightness, like this thing, is reflecting. This is brand new. Saturation. You could keep it plain like this. Like, look, if last time I told you to mess with the multiply settings and uh, you can do something like this now, like cold and uh, clean, full of contrast and new. So there's a lot of things you can play with here. I probably should tell you about this before, like I just thought of it once I stopped recording. I was like, shit, so now I'm catching up on this. So you have all of this, which you can do. Like, look at this, so many new variations and possibilities for the camera. Depth of field, why would you use that? Huh. Well, for starters, you can make the background more blurred, even though it's not a really good thing to do, so let's decrease the fade size and range both to zero. And what do we get now? A rusty kind of feeling. Yeah, by the way, if you're moving the camera, the reflection is gonna be stationary, so if the object is moving, then yeah, sure, it looks nice, but if the camera is moving, yeah, then it's gonna look sloppy, so be careful where you use the reflections. Yeah, I also should have mentioned last time. If I apply the same depth of field here, like, let's go for... You, you can clearly tell that there's a reflection here. Okay, copy camera settings, paste camera settings. This, this little bounce here was really messing me. Okay, look, look, look. Can you see this? The surface is uneven. It's got a, little, a bit of depth to the surface. Like those uh, those rusty metal plates or something like, I don't know how to explain with words. I'm probably gonna put a bunch of images on the screen, but something like this. Like this is what I'm imagining. If you use this right, you have something. Okay, let's go for bloom. And uh, if you haven't noticed, well, you can decrease all that. Now, again, you have a, uh, my eyes. Okay, let's go, let's increase the intensity up like crazy and uh, do this. Intensity, contrast, saturation, like, I want to achieve like a bright reflecting point, like this, something to work like as a blin, like a shine that shines backwards to me, but guys, it's really just hard to recreate that in Minimator. Yeah, but look, this looks a lot more advanced than what we had before, even though 
you guys replied pretty positively on the previous outcome, so thank you for that again. But now you have a whole new level to play with these stuff. Now I want to introduce you to a new method to make reflections on imperfect shapes. Imagine you have a sword, yeah? And you want the reflection on the sword. You could add a bunch of surfaces and somehow connect them together, but that would take forever. So I've developed something which is not even too hard. Like in here, in this test world, this sword here, believe it or not, has a reflection on it. So if I click this render icon, this sword will reflect stuff. However, there is still some glitching to it, so the background might seem funny and kind of weird-ish, but uh, the sword itself is reflecting. So I'm gonna show you how all this is done, and hopefully some of you will figure out how to get rid of this glitching. Okay, what I have here is a sword next to some beach houses, as the scenery is called. It's pretty small, actually. But we want to apply a reflection on this sword. Let's first apply the old-fashioned way, so... We might want to lower the depth of field on this one because the surface area is pretty small, so it's going to reflect a very small proportion of the sky, or anything really around this region. Then again, this surface here is very big, so let's raise it up a bit anyway, so because only this part is going to be visible, which is overlaying the sword. What could we do here? I mean, for starters, this reflections thing need to be up here, so they're above the sword. What is this? 55. If I go 50, like this is gonna glitch, so the ideal will be 51 because it's not gonna glitch. And if I put the alpha down here, I mean, yeah, a part of it is still going to be visible on the sword, and the sword is still going to reflect. However, this is not really functional. So we're going to combine the previous knowledge of my tutorials using the alpha glitch as well as the new reflections technique, and uh, we're gonna make something functional. If I want to make this function, I only need the reflections to appear on the sword, not around it. What we could do is make an item which covers everything but the sword, make it almost invisible and change the render depth so that part is not gonna render but it's visible on the sword so that part is going to render. I don't know how much you can understand what I'm saying right now. Let me try to demonstrate. Okay, I'm grabbing my item sheets, the ones I always use and they will be linked in the description for you to download yourself. There's a lot of different presets. I want to copy this so I don't lose the original. I'm gonna paste it on my desktop. Call it reflection stuff. Open it up with paint.net. Now we need a texture of the sword, Minimeter. Since I'm using the newest version, I'm gonna use the newest map here, but it's the same thing, Minecraft. Open the RAR file with WinRAR Archiver, or any software that lets you open them. Assets, Minecraft, Textures, Item, Sword. Okay, let's go for Diamond Sword. This one, paste it on the desktop. It should remain in this folder as well. You, you can't lose this one or else your Minimeter is gonna break. Like, it's gonna be missing one texture. Don't take them out, just copy them instead. Drag and drop this on my paint.net and click Add Layer. That's gonna add a next layer to the sword. Now make another layer in between these two. And the top layer, which contains the sword, is just gonna be the reference. You're not gonna draw on, the, on it. The background layer is going to be deleted, so just leave it alone. And you're gonna be drawing your shape on this layer right here. Grab a pencil and outline your sword. If I make the sword invisible now, you can see we've made something like this. Now all the parts of the sword are gonna be visible, but the handle is made of wood. Why would wood reflect stuff, right? Let's cover that as well. I drew across the handle, but it's not visible because it's underneath the layer. But you're gonna have to trust me here because only the diamond parts are visible. Now we can throw this upper layer away because we just needed the reference and make this background layer invisible and now save this item sheet as a PNG. Always a PNG! Because PNG is a file format that supports image transparency. Click flatten, but then press Ctrl plus Z to undo this change. The image is exported, but you get to keep your layers in case you need to make adjustments later. I want to add a new item here and we're gonna call it hide because we're gonna use this item to hide the rest of the camera. Import an image, which is gonna be this reflection stuff we just made, 16 by 16, just click OK. Select the first item, and uh, this is it. Actually, let's scale the Z for the height down completely to zero so it's flat. Now lock the height onto your sword. So we have the sword with the reflection, but the height is locked separately. Now it, it, it's gone crazy, I, don't, I can't find it. Oh, it's, it's way up there. Put the position to zero, 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 and it should appear in the center of the thing you locked it to. So the reflection has a position of 51. We want this height above the reflection, so let's go for 0 0.52. 
So now it's just above it. If I make the height invisible, you're still going to see the rest. Well, because I need to adjust the render depth. So now if I do this, you can see the texture below it. However, we are just glitching through the entire scenery. That's why you never go below zero. Go to beach houses, your schematic, and decrease the render depth to minus five, let's say. So now we can use this height thing to go below zero, but still not glitch through the scenery. So let's go for minus three, I guess. So the sword should still be visible no matter what. So let's go for minus four on that. The sword is the parent. So I just changed all the render depths. I, my apologies. You have to change the sword first, because the sword is the parent. Let's put this back to minus three where it was before. And the reflection here should go for minus two or anything above that. So as we see right here, reflection is only visible around the sword. We still have some edges though, but we can fix that easily. Let's add a new surface, call the surface hide. We're gonna lock this surface onto this surface. Now this should be in the same position. So let's, let's uh, scale it up by so. Put this to 90 degrees. The custom rotation point to minus 8 on the X axis. Yeah, scale the X up a bit just so it covers the edge there. Put the mix color to black just because you can. Put the alpha down to 1% just like on this one. This one has the render depth of minus 3 so let's put this one to minus 3 as well. So as you see this part of the reflection is starting to disappear. Now I want to bring the alpha up so I can see where the surface is. Duplicate it. 16 pixels up and uh, 16 pixels on the right. Actually let's scale down the Y just so we, we have as little this to one yeah put it to one it's it's perfect okay uh, I can see an edge up here so let's increase the X here so we're just covering up the parts that's all I'm doing I ended up with this now uh, select all your heights and put their alpha 1% so they are invisible but the reflection is in fact on the sword if I rotate the sword in this direction you can tell there's something moving on the sword okay let's adjust the reflections brightness so you can definitely see something moving on there and yes if you take a look at this your sword is reflecting you probably noticed all this glitching in the background let me tell you something and this is a very useful tip if you're doing anything don't go below the render depth of zero how can we avoid this let's put the bitch up beach houses sorry don't demonetize me put this to one and put the swords render depth which is now going going to affect all the other render depths too. So now there's no glitching, but the sword is still reflecting. So don't worry, we fixed everything here, right? Okay, let's add a new camera and we'll see how that's gonna turn out. Click render here. And as you see, your sword is rendering as it should, but the fog is broken, the SSAO is going to glitch, and you might notice some weird black lines somewhere, but yeah. So it's not completely functional. Let's move it somewhere where we can actually see anything. Come on, please. Don't do me like this, please. I do this now. Hey, this is what I mean. The SSAO, the shadow, something is off about this and we can all see it glitch. The reflections do work, but they're broken. So if anyone finds a way to fix this, I will be grateful and you will get a mention in the next video when I fix this. There might not be a way around this, but if that's not enough, Hey, you got the next level of your camera stuff. Use the effects to make something out of this. Actually, let's try to add effects to this one. Like, let's rotate that. I want, I want to see some more. Like, I want to see something. There's only the sky. Whoa, I can tell there's something shining on there. Look. Oh, that's just the sunlight. The sword is reflecting, okay? You saw it. See, look, I told you. That's the wooden planks. Okay, if I increase the field of view here, you're going to be able to see a fence here. The sword is reflecting, okay? Don't judge me. So yeah, that was your next level reflection tutorial, and I hope I've met your expectations. Play with this, and someone, please, get me a way to fix the glitching with the program. If it's not possible, I can handle it. I really like this feature. I don't want to remove it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, now, now seriously, thank you for watching, and Merry Christmas.